Hope everybody's doing well. Michelle, hope you're doing better. I know you were out for a week or two. And um, so anyway, it's good to see everybody. We're gonna give you a little, I'm gonna give you a little thought uh, this afternoon. And the, the music that I sent you last week was a, the wrong video. That brother, I think his name is Gene. He's with the Cross Carriers. His wife passed away and that song that I put on there last week is about, Brother John, you ever heard that song? Uh, the Hills of Home or something like that. Yes. Uh -huh. Dottie Rambo wrote. Anyway, I'll, I got another song for you. And by the time you're listening to me now, you've already seen it. I'm going to put, a, put another song by the Cross Carriers on there. And it's a really good song. They got some good songs. Anyway, hope everybody's doing well. And uh, hope you guys are not locked into the room right now. And so anyway, I'm going to, uh, Brother Davis. Now, you heard Brother Davis give a little thought uh, last time you were listening to it, uh, on Jonah and we love the book of Jonah. Amen. Wonderful book. So today I'm going to be in first Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. And, uh, the thought that I have today, sister Janice, the, the title of this is the way we show up, the way we show up. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you a little thoughts here, but the what I'm talking about, the way we show up at church, the way we show up uh, with our family, the way we show up at uh, work, you know, wherever we go, just the way we show up in front of somebody, the person in front of us, how do we show up in front of that person, okay? So I'm going to give you a little thought here. Uh, Paul, the Apostle Paul, told us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58, Therefore, my beloved brethren, talking to the church here, he said, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. That's, that's my life's verse. I've uh, started um, kind of thought long, long time ago, maybe two or three years after I got saved. Um, I kind of read that and I thought, boy, it'd be good to have as a verse for your life. He said, therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So you know, I believe one of the things I can say about that is Paul saying, be steadfast, be unmovable, always abound in the work of the Lord. Amen. So, um, He wants us to be, let me, let me say this. He wants us to show up in the right way. Amen. He wants us to show up in the right way. So <clears throat> I, th I thought about this in Romans chapter 12. We ought to show up daily. The way we show up daily, dear friend, will have an influence on those around us. Now, I taught this in Sunday school this morning. But the way we show up daily will influence the people that are around us. If you come into work, you're dragging the ground, and you, you, it seems like you're all negative, that's going to spill over on the people around you. Amen? It's, it's going to have an effect on the people around you. And so if we show up positive, we show up uh, spiritually fit, we've read our Bibles, we've meditated, we've, we've spent some time in prayer with the Lord, we've been sincere with God that morning, and man, we're just ready to meet the day. Then that also is going to spill over and have influence on the people around us in the positive way. Amen. Well, <clears throat> let me just give you a few thoughts here. I'm not going to be long this morning. And all, everyone at the Richwood, I, I hope you'll uh, 
be able to hear this. I'm having some difficulty with the microphone. Paul said in Romans chapter 12, verse 6, Brother Joe, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether by prophecy, Paul said, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith, or ministry, let us wait on our ministry, or he that teacheth on teaching. And I like this next part. Or he that exhorteth on exhortation. I tell you what, if you have the gift of exhortation, you're blessed. And uh, people around you will be blessed as well. I think about a preacher named Bobby Carrico. Some of you uh, may have heard me talk about him before. And uh, some of the people listening, uh, they know Brother Carrico. But Brother Carrico has the uh, gift of exhortation. He can come into your church service or the camp meeting and just, man, he'll lead the singing and just, just the way he cuts up and he'll have everybody just kind of lifted up, Brother John. Am I right? Brother Carrico has a way, of, and then Brother Sonny Mole is the same way, uh, has a gift of exhortation. And then Paul said, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. And then he goes on and on and on, you know, uh, uh, to, be, to rejoice in hope, patient in tribulation, uh, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality. Paul just gives us a whole list there that we ought to, um, uh, the way we should show up, dear friend, as a child of God, amen? Before I was saved, uh, I didn't, I didn't <laughs> before I was saved, I didn't show up that way. I wasn't worried about the saints. I wasn't worried about anything else except me. Uh, in mind. And that's how we are when we're lost. Amen. But when we get saved by the grace of God, God does a just a miraculous change in your life when the Holy Ghost comes in to live with inside of you. Uh, I still remember on March 10th, 1996 is the day I got saved. And I still remember that. And um, may I tell you what, uh, used to do drugs and alcohol. Won't go into detail about that. But that was just a part of my life. And then when the Holy Ghost moved in, when I asked God to save me, he revolutionized my, my life, amen, just, it's, it's just a revolution. Uh, just the things that I loved, I now hated, and the things I used to hate, then I, those are the things I love now. Love coming to church, and, and so love being with the brethren, being with the church, amen, being with the saints of God. And uh, uh, when I go to work, dear friend, uh, if, if I'm not careful, it, it, it would be easy to let uh, uh, people at work that are negative, I'm talking about anybody, I'm not talking about myself specifically, but if we go to work and there's a lot of negative talk, negative influences around you, if you're not careful, that will influence you as a child of God. And that's why I say the title of this thought here is the way we show up. We need to show up, dear friend, with, with the Holy Ghost, knowing that he is inside of us and he leads us and guides us and directs us. And so we need to show up in a positive way. <clears throat> so three things I, I taught about this morning in the Sunday school was do we show up uh, spiritually? Do we show up in a spiritual way? Uh, it's easy to show up in a hateful way or an argumentative way or a negative way. But do we, as a child of God, do we, you and I, show up in a spiritual way? Well, the spruce, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> the spruce, uh, in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, talks about the fruits of the Spirit. And so I'm, I'm going to read that to you. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, Paul uh, outlines the fruits of the Spirit. This is how you and I should show up, dear friend. He said, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. There's no law to regulate the fruits of the Spirit. Uh, there's no law to regulate love and joy and peace and long-suffering, gentleness and goodness, faith, meekness and temperance. He said, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the aff affections uh, uh, and lust. Paul said, if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Now, the way to show up uh, in a spiritual manner, showing up spiritually you have to have the fruits of the Spirit. Those fruits right there in Galatians chapter 5, dear friend, uh, will help you show up in a spiritual manner. Amen? So, uh, secondly, real quick, we're going to be done here in just two or three minutes. Not only should we show up spiritually, 
But Brother John, we ought to show up intentionally. We ought to show up with a purpose. Uh, most of the mornings when I get up and I, if, I, if I start my day out like this, when I go to work, I show up with a purpose, Brother John. I show up with a, with a heart of gladness, a heart of exhortation, uh, a spirit that I want to be a blessing to those people around me. Whether I go to the Walmart, whether I go to the gas station, wherever I go, I want to show up with a purpose. Our purpose as a child of God is to shed light uh, on those around us with the gospel. I, I, I said here a while back in the military, in the Marine Corps, uh, no matter what job you sign up for in the Marine Corps, uh, the number one responsibility is to be a rifleman in the Marine Corps. Every Marine uh, is a rifleman first and foremost. And then you have to train uh, with your rifle, you know, infantry and all that stuff. That's your basic core job in the Marine Corps. But you might, you might do other stuff in the Marine Corps. You might be a, a mechanic. You might uh, work on the airplanes. I mean, whatever. You know, I was an ammo tech. But, uh, but the number one purpose of every Marine is to be a rifleman. The number one purpose for a child of God is to promote and propagate the gospel. Amen. To let people know about the Lord Jesus Christ. Thirdly and lastly, uh, first of all, do we show up spiritually? Second of all, do we show up intentionally or with a purpose? And the last thing I want to say is, do we show up faithfully? Amen. Do we show up faithfully? Well, I, I said this morning, a great example of that is Daniel. <clears throat> You're not going to find any more, anyone in the Bible more faithful than Daniel. Uh, there, there's Joseph, there's Moses. We can talk about a bunch of people in the Bible, but Daniel always stands out to me, Brother John, about being faithful. In Daniel chapter 6, verse 3 and five, three through 5, let me read this and we'll be done. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princess uh, because an excellent spirit was, was in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Uh, then the Bible said they can, uh, uh, verse number 4, then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find none occasion nor fault, for as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. So they couldn't find anything wrong with Daniel, so they went against him because he prayed three times a day. He was faithful to his God, to the, to the God of heaven, amen? So I, I said this morning, if we're going to be guilty of anything, let us be guilty of being faithful. Amen. Uh, life is difficult. Uh, we went through a, a, a horrible year last year with this virus and all the politics and everything else. But one thing you and I can do, dear friend, above all, is be faithful. Just be faithful uh, to read the Bible. Be faithful to speak to the Lord. Go to, go to him in prayer. Be faithful to encourage someone uh, around you. Uh, just be faithful to the house of God. Amen. Just be faithful. You can't go wrong there, dear friends. So do we show up spiritually? Do we show up intentionally? And do we show up faithfully? And that's the thought today, Brother Joe, uh, Sister Penny, Sister Monica, Janice, and uh, Lois, John, everybody there at the Richwood, hope you're doing well. And as soon as we can, hopefully maybe this year we'll get back in there in person. And so Michelle, if there's anything I can do to help out, just let me know. We're going to sign out and we'll see you next time.